Hi everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're going to talk about how to perform a capsule stain. First, what's a capsule? Certain strains of bacteria and certain strains of yeasts have this protective outer covering called a capsule that helps to protect them from the host's immune system. So basically the immune system has a hard time clearing the body of certain strains of bacteria and yeasts if they can form that capsule around them, just that protective outer covering. The presence of a capsule increases the pathogen's pathogenicity. What this means is that if you have two different strains of the same species of bacterium, and one strain can produce a capsule and the other one can't, the one that can produce a capsule is much more dangerous um, and can also require different types of antibiotics. So this means detecting whether or not the pathogen produces that capsule is an important diagnostic tool. It helps doctors decide the best course of action to take for their infected patients. So in order to diagnose, does this particular strain have a capsule or not, you have to use what we call a capsule stain. Now, capsules themselves don't absorb most dyes. And so we use what's called a negative stain, where instead of staining the actual bacteria or yeast cells, we're actually staining the background instead. And so there's two possible procedures here. There's using a procedure that uses only a negative stain. We're just going to stain the background. So we've got this dark background and then the cells sort of stand out as these white, um, these white circles or, or, or rods or whatever the shape of the bacteria may be. You can also use a combination of a negative stain to stain the background and a positive stain to stain the cell where the capsule is unstained simply because it doesn't sort of readily absorb most dyes. And so you get this clear halo effect. So this right here is what we call the, the halo that shows us that there's a capsule there. Um, even in a negative stain, it can be possible to see like an outline of um, the cell in some cases. And so you might still see that halo effect. Now let's talk about what the two procedures are in more detail. If you're using a negative stain only, you'll add the cells to a slide as a wet mount, no need to, uh, to heat fix it. Add two to three drops of a negative stain. Common ones are uh, nigrosin or India ink. Um, either one will provide this really dark background where the, the cells and their capsules will then sort of stand out as white against this dark background. And you'll see that by viewing under a microscope with an oil immersion lens. If you want to do the procedure where you have a negative and a positive stain use, you start out the same way. You prepare that wet mount, no heat fixing. You allow it to air dry and then you flood it um, first with one stain, for example, crystal violet. And then you actually wash off the crystal violet with 20% copper sulfate. So that crystal violet will stain the cells. Um, the, the copper sulfate has sort of a dual role of, of decolorizing, sort of um, making sure the capsule stands out as that, uh, as that clear halo and also staining the background. And so you get sort of a dark purple background and then sort of like a uh, sort of a lighter purple usually cell and that clear halo around which you can see after you blot dry and then view under an oil immersion lens. If you want to learn about some more stains, for example, uh, the endospore stain, the gram stain, the acid fast stain, you can see my videos on any of those. If you want to know a little bit more about what makes a stain a negative stain, what makes it a positive stain, then check out my video on acidic versus basic stains in microbiology. And thanks for watching Biology Professor.